Welcome to Slayer the Alchemist, and on today's episode, let's discuss Anvil and their albums Metal on Metal and Forged in Fire. Metal on Metal came out April of 1982, Forged in Fire came out in April of 83. You may remember the Anvil movie from, gosh, when was that? Probably going on 15 years now, 13 to 15 years ago where it, and the, that movie sort of started this documentary trend of finding some obscure band and what are they doing now where have, where have they been type of thing and it's a great documentary it goes and kind of follows along you sort of get hey what they've been doing since their glory days in the in the in the early 80s and sort of them trying to have a have a comeback of sorts and Anvil's kind of an interesting band. They get a lot of people feel like they're uh, one of the early thrash metal bands, one of the originators of thrash metal. I don't know if I'd quite go that far, but you know they're they're probably a part of it because this is eighty two, eighty three, and uh, they are playing some stuff. As I talk about these these albums, there are moments on these albums, songs on these albums that are pretty heavy and they are pretty thrashy. You could, And thrash in the sense of uh, Metallica's first album, the way Metallica sort of sped up new wave of British heavy metal sounding riffs, but made them a lot faster and heavier. That's kind of what's, what's happening here with Anvil. So I could sort of see someone considering them the link between, let's say, Motorhead anvil and then metallica I, I could see that making sense although it's not across all these not every song on these on these albums i'd say that forged in fire is uh, has more heavy stuff on it than metal on metal does but i can definitely hear that hear that there there's a lot of double bass drum uh playing here from rob reiner and here you got the guys in the band i'll show you the back covers here we got lips on lead guitar vocals rob reiner on on uh drums uh ian dickinson on bass dixon and dave allison on rhythm guitar and he also sings vocals al you know this is like in the in the anvil movie there's they sort of raise this question and here's here's the guys again these were both i believe these are both on attic records although this one may be yeah, they're both Attic Records, which I believe is a Canadian uh, record label. You know, in the Anvil movie, there's sort of this this thing of like they should have been they should have been a bigger band, and, and and you know maybe that's true because again maybe they were a little ahead of their time with with the sound that they were doing. But there's some there's some aspects of the band. For instance, the vocals. I've always kind of felt like Lips is an okay vocalist, but he's not a great vocalist, and sometimes. Uh, some of these songs, I, if I could, I just think, man, if they just had a better vocalist, it would really take some of these songs to another level. Uh, Rob Reiner is a great drummer, uh, there, but again, there's some inconsistencies here on these these albums. So if we start start with uh, no, start with Metal on Metal from '82, uh, the title track it's sort of an anthem of a heavy metal anthem of sorts. I got to be honest with you, I don't really. I only think the song's okay. I kind of don't like the plotting nature of it and this kind of the, the melody line and everything. So it's really, it's not my favorite song on this on this record. Uh, Mothra. Now I love Mothra. I think that's great. This is a good example of, again, sort of an early kind of sped up new wave of British heavy metal sound. And, and this always raises the question, you know, what do you consider... Uh, it's it's like this possessed seven churches in death scream bloody gore. What's the first death metal record? Well... You know, people will argue that. I, I always make this distinction between glam metal and L.A. metal. Uh, it's, it's the same thing here with sort of thrash. Is this thrash like Rust in Peace or Anthrax or Slayer? Cer certainly not. It's nowhere near as heavy as that. But is it, I mean, do you consider Motorhead to be thrash? I don't consider Motorhead to be thrash. Lemmy doesn't even consider Motorhead to be heavy metal. So again, it's all this sort of these gray areas and these transition bands. And, and what is speed metal and what is thrash metal? I mean, that could be a topic of another, another video. That's also sort of a gray area. Well, where is something just fast new wave of British heavy metal? And when does it flip over into thrash metal? But there are times on here where it does get real sort of uh thrashy like uh 
Now, if I were to say the heaviest song on this record and definitely the darkest, thrashiest song on here would be the last song on this album, 666. And that almost sounds like it could be a Venom song. It's 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 very aggressive. It's very fast, a double bass drum things. But then there's other times where it, it, it just it doesn't doesn't work for me. Like, for instance, Stop Me. Uh, and on both these records, uh, Ian Dixon sings, I'm sorry, uh, Dave Allison sings a song and there are these oddball songs on here it's stop me and on here it is uh is it never deceive me i can't remember which one it is on here i think it's never deceive me and they're both his vocals i, I mentioned that i i don't think lips is, is like an amazing vocalist uh I like his vocals even less than Lips. And to me, it, it reminds me of like his vocals and the songs remind me of like something Ace Frehley would have sung on like Unmasked, Dynasty Unmasked era Kiss. That's what those songs remind me of. And they sort of stand out like a, they're just they're almost like melodic rock or something. And they just stand out in a very awkward way. Uh, March of the Crabs is, it is a great, fantastic instrumental. Makes me think of like a heavier version of Michael Shanker's uh, Captain Nemo. Uh, Jack Hammer's okay. I like I, I like that one. Uh, Heat Sink. Now there's an example of another one that's got a real kind of thrashy type of uh, thing to it. Uh, tag Team. And this is another thing about about Anvil. Sometimes I like when their lyrics stick to stuff like Mothra, which is about you know Godzilla, one of Godzilla's one of his enemies i don't know or one of his friends mothra one of the creatures from the godzilla early godzilla uh, tv movies uh but then there's other times where they where they go off into these into lyrics that i don't really care for like tag team for instance uh, tease me please me uh scenery is okay i kind of like that one i think the chorus is pretty catchy on that and i mentioned 666 already so Really on here, like Mothra, March of the Crab, 666. Those are just just great. But I like this one better. Now, the production, both of these albums were produced by Chris Tangridas. I'm probably not exactly saying his name right. Uh, Chris, uh, he, he did the Eternal Idol, Black Sabbath's Eternal Idol. Uh, and I like this production on this one a little bit better. It has a little bit more reverb to it, thus giving it a little bit more atmosphere. And I love the title track on this. It's slow and it's heavy. I actually love Lips's delivery in this. Uh, works really good. It reminds me of in the Anvil movie, they land up making uh, the movies about them getting back together and making the album This Is 13. And it reminds me of that song. This Is 13 reminds me of Forged in Fire. And I just love the groove to it. It's super heavy. Uh, a band I was in, we actually did a cover of that song for like an Anvil tribute uh, record. Uh, so that's great. Shadow Zone is a great one too. That one's pretty fast and sort of thrashy. Uh, free as the Wind. I like the chorus in that one. It's got sort of the chorus sort of stops. It's free as the wind. It sort of has this sort of majestic sort of thing to it. Never Deceive Me Again. I don't like that one. Uh, Butter Bust Jerky. This is again an example of I don't like when they go there with these type of I don't know, silly sex lyrics or something. I don't know. I just don't like it. Future Wars is great. That's another thrashy one. Uh, Hard Times, Fast Ladies. That's okay. I guess it makes me think of kind of Motorhead, that sort of fast, aggressive new new wave of British heavy metal. Make it up to you. I don't like that one. Uh, maybe that's maybe that's the other one that uh, that the other guitar player sings. I can't remember now. Motor Mount, though, I really like Motor Mount. And that, maybe it's just because of the title that's making me think it is, but it makes me think of Motorhead, like Overkill era Motorhead. That one's great. And I love Winged Assassins. That might be next to the title track on this Winged, Winged Assassins. It's just great. And this is a good example of one like, man, if like Rob Halford sang that song, I could just really picture him doing all kinds of like screams and just taking the song to a whole another level. So, all right, uh, Anvil, Metal on Metal and Forged in Fire. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think of these records? Did you see the Anvil movie? What did you think of that? Or Anvil, what the one of the originators of thrash metal? Uh, maybe I'd say that they are part of the history of that for for sure and I, I could picture Metallica saying that they heard these records and that that also influenced them along with Motorhead and 
Angel Witch and Diamond Head and all the other stuff that they were listening to. So uh, let me know what you guys think of Anvil. What do you think of these two records? What do you think of that movie? What do you think of them as far as you know their influence on thrash metal? Let me know down below till we see you again. Make sure you stay heavy, stay metal.